So in this week's video, I'm going to be talking about the new constrain components functionality on a real world example. So let's take a look. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the new functionality that Autodesk just added into Fusion called constrain components and how this differs from the regular joint command. What's cool with constrain components is it basically allows you to assemble your parts together um, using almost like constraints. So you can use like faces and edges and planes and you're basically saying I want this lined up with that and this lined up with that plane and you're constraining the parts together instead of using the joint command where you had to say I want this point to match that point and this tick mark to match that tick mark etc. So let me show you a quick example of this. So I'm going to look at this example here. This is my cutter assembly. You can see my cutter frame is pinned in place so I can't move it right now but I can move this guy around. So if I use the new constrain components and I say constrain that face, that shaft, with that hole right there, you can see that it lined them up. It aligned them together. And if I say OK and I drag this, you can see that I can move it up and down and also rotate it. So it basically created a cylindrical joint for us. OK, let me undo that and let's do that again. But this time I'm going to say, let's line up that face with that face. And you can see that sure enough, it did. And if I grab this, it basically created a planar joint type, but there's no relationship between the shaft and the hole. OK, so let's do that again. I'll line up that face with that face and I'm going to keep the constraint components dialog open this time and I'm going to add in another constraint. So I'm going to say the plus symbol and I'll select the shaft and that hole. So we now have two constraints. I'll say OK and now you can see that it's no longer a cylindrical joint type. It's more like a revolute joint type. So I can't move it up and down. It only revolves. And that's because we told it line up with the plane first. And then we told it revolve around the shaft and the hole. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's do it one more time. But this time I'm going to just select that edge. And I'm going to select that edge. And Basically, in one click, we now have created the exact same result. So we have a revolute joint type. Um, because we picked edge to edge, it has to stay on that same plane. So you can kind of see we can get multiple different results just by tying down the degrees of freedom with these constraints. So one of the cool things with this is you can now constrain things to planes, for example. So here's my origin. And with using the regular joint command, this was difficult to do. But using the new constrained components, check this out. I could say, for example, I want this face to line up with that plane. And we can see that, sure enough, that face is now lined up with that plane. I could even come in here and say, add another constraint. And I want this circular edge to be lined up with this point right here. and the center of that circular edge is now centered with that zero, zero point. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And if I grab this body, you can see that it actually rotates around. And this kind of makes sense because the first constraint that we did was we constrained the flat face with the plane. And so it basically created a planar joint type. Then we came in and said constrain the circular edge with this zero zero point which is kind of like an axis so it allows it to rotate around that point well we don't want it to be able to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this constraint set so here's the two constraints that we created I'm going to go ahead and add in another constraint and I want to say for example I want this face to stay planar with this face at an angle of zero degrees I'll go ahead and say OK. And now if I try and rotate this part, you can see we've locked down all degrees of freedom. 
It can't move up and down, it can't slide around, and it can't rotate anymore because we've constrained all of those degrees of freedom. So let's go ahead and continue assembling this together using these new constrained components. So I wanna bring this part over here. Well, this is kind of like a cylindrical face. I'm gonna select that cylindrical face. I want that to kind of line up with that cylindrical face. And you can see, sure enough, it did but this part is a little bit higher, so I'm just gonna add in another constraint. We'll click that top face, we'll click that top face, and now they're lined up. I'll say okay, and because this guy is locked down, I can no longer click and drag on this guy. You can kind of see it's locked down. We've locked down all of its degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's um, take a look at like the, this, these two assemblies here. So. This is kind of a cool example. I have, um, actually let me lock this guy down. If I click on it, that's the motor gear assembly. Um, and that's the base. I'm gonna just pin this base really quick. And we can see that I have some gears here and I used regular joints. So revolute joints, rigid groups, um, and then even some motion links to link all of these gears together. So these are using regular joints, but we can use the constrained components to bring these parts together and the joints will also function as normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and say constrain components um, and I wanna click on this face here, but you'll notice it's not letting me, it's not highlighting that face. And that's kind of a clue that that is pinned in place. It's not able to move, so it won't let me move it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpin that base and now if I come over here, sure enough, you can see we can pick on edges and faces. So I'm going to select that cylindrical face and I'm going to select that cylindrical face. And we just lined those faces up. Now I want to line up a couple of these holes. So I'm going to come in here and add in a constraint. And let's just say, for example, that hole there and I'll pick on that hole there just to verify that they're lined up with each other. And then the last thing I wanna do is bring this face down so it's flush with that face. So I'll add in another constraint and I'll say that face with that face. And you can see how we've brought that down. Um, just FYI, you'll notice that there's this offset in here. So I told those faces to be flush with each other I could say, you know, offset that 0 0.05, and you can see how that moved up 0 0.05, or I could even say minus 0 0.05, and so it brought it down a little bit extra. Um, we'll go ahead and set that back to zero, and say okay. And now if I move this around, you can see it's almost like a rigid group. Uh, so all those gears and everything are inside there, um, inside this assembly. Let me go ahead and click on this guy. That's part of the base. I'll turn off um, that really quick. Now I wanna position this into its correct location. I know that this has to sit on top of this little shelf. So we just click on the bottom of that face, click on the top of that face, and it's lined those up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in another constraint. I want this cylindrical face to sit in this little cylindrical face recess and I'll say okay. And we've just positioned that in there. Now something that I do is I'll go ahead and click and drag on this to see what kind of joint that it created. And well, I can see that it created a revolute joint, which kind of makes sense. We did a cylindrical um, joint type or, or constraint, I should say. And then we also did a planar constraint so it can you know, slide on that face and it can revolve around that cylinder, but I don't want it to be able to revolve. So I need to tie that down or lock that down. So I'm gonna edit that last constraint set. We'll add in one more constraint. And I could say, for example, I want that face to stay planar with this face here, or that plane, I should say, at zero degrees. Now, if I try and drag that, I can't rotate it around. It's fully locked down. Okay, I'll turn um, that body back on. 
So the next thing I want to do is position this ring that goes on here. And you can kind of see it's at some funky angle. And there's really not a flat face on here. However, um, you know, every face has an end point and a start point. So there is like this edge on both sides. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So I'm going to click on Constrain uh, Components. And let's just pick this inside point there. And I'm going to select that inside point there. And you can see that it did line those up. Then I'll go ahead and pick this top inside point and line it up there. And sure enough, it did that. But this ring is still at a weird angle. And if I add in another constraint, you'll notice I can't pick on like this face and line it up with this face because it's, you know, it's a variable curve. It doesn't um, have a flat face for me to reference. But I do have this outside edge and there's this outside edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that point there. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's that point on the red part. You can actually see we can kind of pick through our design. So I'm going to pick there and it rotated that ring to align those up. So we basically lined up the inside straight edge first and then we used this outside point and that's what kind of rotated it in place. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Now you'll see later on we can't use that for this particular shape here. So I'll show you a neat little tip on how we can get about um, resolving that problem with this cylindrical type shape and this cone type shape. Okay, I'm gonna continue on with um, the rest of the subassembly really quick. So I'll do constrain components. Again, I'm hovering over this and I notice I can't select it, so that's a clue. Let me click on this. That's the cutter assembly, and sure enough, the cutter frame is pinned in place, so it can't move. So I'm gonna unpin that. Then I should be able to use the constrained components. Sure enough, I can. I'll click there. And then I'm just going to pick on this cylindrical shape there. I'll say OK. And then I want to kind of visualize what did that do. Well, you'll notice it's allowing me to move this whole assembly. And that doesn't really give me a good picture of what's happening. So I'm going to pin this light gray part. So I select it. I can see that that's part four. I'm going to pin that down for now. And now if I grab this assembly, I can see that I can rotate it and I can slide it up and down. And so it created a cylindrical joint type for me, which makes sense because we did a cylinder and a cylinder so it can revolve and slide at the same time. Okay, then let's go ahead and do the same thing here. If I select, uh, for example, this face here, and this face here, it's going to line those guys up. If I say OK, you can kind of see how it can slide, but it can also rotate. Again, I would have to pin this down to visualize that. So let's go ahead and click on it. That's the piston assembly. Um, there's the body. So let me go ahead and oh, that's the case. Let me go ahead and pin that. And so sure enough, you can see that it created a cylindrical joint type for me, which kind of makes sense because in reality, there's a spring that kind of pushes on this up and down, but it can also rotate. And so it's, it's making sense. That's what it needs to do. Okay. Um, let's move on here. So now I'm going to create um, this guy. And, oh, and again, I pinned it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and unpin some of these. So we have the flexibility. Um, so that was this guy. I'll scroll down. That's the piston case. We'll unpin. Constrain components. I'm just going to pick the cylinder and a cylinder like so. And then I might come in and add another constraint. And I'll say I want like that face to be flush with that face just to position it where I want in this assembly. And then lastly, I'll come in and say, I want to line up these pins. And I could do like the cylindrical face with a cylindrical face down here. But what I'm gonna do is I like to pick the edge because it's basically gonna do 
the planar face that that edge is sitting on and the cylindrical axis at the same time. So I'm going to pick both of those and so you can kind of see how it lined them up, but it doesn't look lined up correctly in here. So let's go ahead and add in another constraint and it's a little tough to see what's going on here, but I can now come in and line up, for example, this pin with that hole right there and you'll see it kind of shift over and now everything lined up. So we just lined up two of those pins and it's this part is sitting flat on the face where those pins are. Okay, so for this last part here of this basket, we can't use that same trick that we used earlier. So for example, if I say line up this point here with this point here, and then I add in another constraint of that point to that point, you'll notice we get an error message. And that's because these are two different thicknesses. So these points don't actually line up. So I can't use that, that little trick that I used for this white ring earlier. But one of the cool things with the constrained components is that you can use planes. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this basket component and let's create a plane through three points. So I'm gonna say, for example, maybe that point there, that point there, and this point here. And we just created a plane that slices through those three points. Now I can use this plane to help me line things up. So I'll do the constrained components. Let's line up this cylinder with this cylinder. And sure enough, they line up. I'll add in a constraint and let's say I want that plane to line up with this side plane right here. And we can see how that kind of rotated that basket around. And then lastly, we can see it's sitting a little bit too high. Well, now I have these two points. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want that point and that point to line up with each other. And we now have the basket exactly where it needs to be. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off the construction. And then we just need to position this guy into place. So once again, I'll probably just line up the cylinder with maybe like this cylinder here. And then we'll just say this top face with this top face here. I'll say, okay. If I grab that, we can see that that rotates, which in reality it does. That's how you take the whole thing apart. And we now have the whole thing assembled using the constrained components functionality. So give this a try. Um, pick an assembly, maybe like a vise or something like that, that you download or find in the samples folder and try out the different um, clicks and picks like I showed at the very beginning where you, know, you pick a shaft and a hole, or you pick an edge and an edge, just to see what the different results that you get and start assembling things together and see how it can really kind of speed up the assembly process. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.